When we talk about MAP, Modular Aggregation of Principles for Bible Translation, we have something in mind more like Google Maps than we do a map hanging on the wall or an atlas in the glove box of your car. What, Go what Google Maps offers is a large amount of data drawn together from many sources, constantly being updated, and begging for questions. So now we can, we can browse through this large data set and look at a large amount of the world by um, just scrolling through this screen. But we can also localize this data by asking questions of it. Using the search functionality, we can move from looking at a large part of Western Europe down to one particular city in France and get a sense of the road layout, uh, other locations in the city and start to begin our trip there. This is the notion we have in MAP, Modular Aggregation of Principles for Bible Translation. Many people and many sources gathering a large amount of data and resources and questions and content together and providing a way for us to localize and narrow and filter that content for our particular needs. This is MAP at Bloomfire. Bloomfire is one of the tools we use within the MAP ecosystem. And much like Google Maps, MAP at Bloomfire has a large amount of rich data and resources for us to use and to discuss and to build upon. And this rich collection of resources is generated from many different sources and aggregated together and begging for questions, much like we saw in Google Maps. The most powerful way to localize and filter this uh, rich set of content and resources in MAP is the search functionality, much like we saw in Google Maps. Uh, Bloomfire has a very smart search utility. Um, if you click in the search box at the top and do a search for something like uh, relevance theory, uh, you can see uh, several posts in, in MAP that are related to relevance theory. You can see how often they've been viewed. Um, but most importantly, if you don't find what you want in this list, at the bottom of the search box, there's an Ask button. If you click on the Ask button, this allows you to ask the community a question. Um, you give your question a, a title, what is um, the importance of relevance theory for Bible translation, um, and you can submit this question. And the beauty is anybody in the community can respond to this question. And this question that you've asked will then drive the next set of conversations and content that uh, become a part of MAP. And so, like we said about Google Maps, MAP for Bible translation is begging for questions. This content is not just for consumption, it's for participation and engagement. Once you do find a post that you're interested in, once you click into the post, there are a number of things you can do within a resource or a piece of content in MAP. You can read and, and watch um, and go out to links that are shared. You can download videos that have been posted in MAP so you can watch them uh, without needing a fast or active internet content. You can high-five the contributor um, to tell them that you've uh, found what they've posted useful. You can follow this contributor to see what else they post to the community. You can share this post uh, through social media mechanisms. And best of all, you can comment on this particular post. And here's a place where you can ask questions, add extra insights, add a, uh, a localized or contextual example of how this uh, makes sense in your work as a translator. Uh, and then at the bottom of the page, you can see related posts to this one through the, the tags and categories that have been associated with this post. Another tool we use to localize map materials uh, and map conversations is a tool called Canvas. Uh, so again, map is a, an ecosystem of tools that Bloomfire is a part of that, Canvas is a part of that, other tools can be a part of that as we go on and as we learn tools that will help us share conversation and materials. But this is one example of another way of localizing map materials. Canvas is a learning management system that allows us to create um, learning communities uh, in the digital space. 
So here you'll see we created a learning community for NIDA School of Bible Translation in 2013. What Canvas provides is a place where um, the people involved in NIDA School of Bible Translation can have conversations and selective uh, content engagement. Um, so they can take materials from the larger pool of, of data in Map on Bloomfire and they can selectively localize for this particular learning community. So you'll see this meeting occurred from May 13th to the 17th last year, but you'll see they had activities, the students and the instructors had engagement and activities for a whole month before that to begin the conversation long before they showed up in Italy together. Um, and so you'll see here, if we take a look at one of the example activities, a general introduction to relevance theory, you'll see what um, Stephen Padamore has done is taken this general introduction to relevance theory, which is actually something he built in Map on Bloomfire. So if we click on that link, it will open up back into the Bloomfire tool, and here's a series that he made in Bloomfire. So he created this material in, in Bloomfire, part of Map, so that anybody can, can find and, and access that material. But then he selectively aggregated and, and brought that into um, this Canvas space so the students of NSBT could engage it. So he had them look at the, the series in Bloomfire and then ask them some questions. And here you'll see the students engaging. Again, some with um, media, some with just text, but you'll see there's a long st stretch of conversation here between the instructor and the students and other instructors sometimes would chime in. Here's another example of uh, a localization of map materials and conversations within Canvas. Um, you'll notice here that the courses in Spanish, uh, even the interface language, uh, the navigation and things uh, are in Spanish. Uh, and there are other languages that Canvas can handle for its delivery as well. But you notice here they, they've built a course. Um, these folks are going to meet together later in October, but they're starting activities and conversations beforehand. Again, if we go into one of their activities in the Canvas space, we'll see that there are several links back out to the larger data set out in Map on Bloomfire. So uh, Bob Boscom has posted this video out on Bloomfire in MAP uh, and then has asked the students within Canvas, uh, a smaller group of students, to look specifically at this component of the MAP materials. And this is built into a series, so you can see that the students can then use these arrows to progress through a series of sequential posts in MAP. So again, the Canvas space is providing a localization of map materials for a particular learning community and you'll see now they can have conversation around that particular bit of information from map.